wants to meet with people tonight. Is this on, by the way? Yeah. Really, yeah. Now, I just believe that Jesus really wants to meet with people tonight. So we're going to have some space afterwards just to come back into his presence and encounter him before we, before we go today. And we said, didn't we, that church isn't something that we go to or attend. But it's a funny little Greek word called ecclesia, which means a gathering of those called together for purpose. Don't worry if it doesn't come up, you just have to listen to me. <laughs> uh, it's a gathering of those called together and chosen for purpose. And we said that's what we are that Jesus has chosen us and gathered us together into this community, this ecclesia. And we also said that church is the place where God lives at the centre. That in one sense that he's... Are we, are we all right? We, we said it was the, the place where God lives at the centre. That he's, he lived, he's with us as individuals. But in the gathered church, his presence is there. And we can experience him. And that's what I've got my heart for tonight. That if any of you have never experienced the presence of Jesus when we come together, I'm going to pray that we experience that tonight. Because Jesus <coughs> wants to meet with us. And that... I just hope and trust that some of my words might lead us there, but it's Jesus that we want to meet with tonight. And I'm just going to invite him to come. And then we're just going to have time after I finish talking where we just encounter him, which is why we cut it short a bit, because we're going to meet with him. Holy Spirit, I just pray, I just pray, if anyone here really wants to experience Jesus tonight, I encourage you just to sort of sit with the posture to gym with your hands out like that, with your heart open, and particularly if you never ever have an experience of Jesus or he feels distant from you. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to come into this encounter congregation tonight. Spirit of Jesus, I just pray that you will just move through this room and tuck hearts and let your spirit just move like a breath of wind just through us just gentle breathing of your spirit upon us thank you Jesus and we talked last time about life we talked from the story of Winnie the Pooh does anyone remember that? yeah about Pooh and Piglet and they, were, they thought they were on a mission to find a heffalump and a woozy. But actually, they were just following their own tracks, going round in circles. And we said that sometimes our life feels like that. But that God has a purpose that is moving forward all the time. And that we took, we went right back, didn't we, back into ancient times. And we looked how that God, in each generation was looking for a people that would follow him on that journey. And we said that it, God's purpose was ultimately to fill the earth with people that reflect him and are like him. I thought Jim was going to preach my talk this morning, a little bit earlier. But <laughs> and we said that was what God's purpose was, was to do that right from, right in the beginning, right before anybody use the word church or anything like that that was God's purpose to gather a people that would be like him and to fill the earth with the people that are like him and that even though people messed it up time and time again God's plan and purpose carried on and we said didn't we that even if you feel you've messed up it's never too late to get yourself back into God's purpose because God's purpose is moving on don't be like Winnie the Pooh and Piglet just following your own tracks going around in circles but get on to God's plan and that's where we ended up and we went through the story and we ended up with Jesus the baby being born and that's when we're going to start today and we're going to start today with Jesus born everything up until that moment of time had all been 
looking forward to that day. So everything that was written in the old part, first part of Scripture was actually really just about Jesus coming. That's what Jesus said it was about. Yeah, that's what it was all about. They were all looking forward to that moment. And when that moment came, Jesus wasn't born as this mighty triumphant king, but he was born as a baby to an ordinary teenage mum called Mary. And he lived in this out of the way place in the Roman Empire, not too far away from where Alex and Dean were going to be moving out to. A little place, a little backwater place, not a well known place, not the place you would think the person who was going to save the world would be born. You know, no social media, no, no hype, no one knew anything about it. And yet, despite where he was born and who he was born, to be, he was destined to be the one who knew God would completely transform the world. That little humble baby born to a teenage girl in the backwater of nowhere. And I just feel that Spirit God wants to say to some of us tonight, it doesn't matter what your background is. God still can use you for his purpose. Amen. Yeah, you're not going to be Jesus because there's only one Jesus. But God can still use you mightily, mightily for his purpose. And I just feel, God, if you hear nothing else from the rest of the talk tonight, just in your heart, just believe that God can use you. It doesn't matter where you came from. I look at my background sometimes and think that I came from a poor home, dysfunctional family, messed up. And God uses me now. Yeah, he's turned me around. And I'm not like that anymore. Yeah? Then Jesus, he lived out his life in this out of the way place. You know, he didn't go and move to Rome, which is the centre, and he lived there until he was 33 years old. And most of the stuff that happened in just in three years of his life, that was all. Most of the stuff is three years of his life. But during these three years, he picked up and called a diverse group of about 120 men and women of all sorts of backgrounds and, and different people, motley crew. And that's who he picked and chose. And the other thing was, is that I just felt to say, is that some of the most important people that Jesus picked were actually women. Because in Jesus' time, women were classed, regarded as just possessions. Oh. It's all right, let's go. Carry on. Oh, it's just throwing me in there. I'm not sure where it's coming from. But, so, the, and I just believe God wants to speak to some of the ladies here tonight. And to say that God has chosen you for purpose. Yeah? yeah? Jesus chose women. Yeah? Not just men. Yeah? They're named in scripture. That's really important. It may, when we look at it backwards with our culture, it doesn't seem that important. But it was really quite radical back then to name women in that way. Yeah? We look at the early church. There were women who were really heavily involved. Yeah? And I believe God wants to call some of you women tonight to serve him. But then, after this three years, when he was 33 years old, Jesus died. And we all know the story. And he came back to life. And then he left the disciples again to go up into heaven. But he left them with a mission to carry out God's plans. This plan that had been going way back, he said, he, he then said, right, now, you guys, you people, you go and you carry out that mission. You go into all the world and you make people and train people to be like Jesus and to reflect God. That's what he called them to be. Yeah? To, and to leave communities of people, ecclesia, gatherings, churches in all parts of the world. But he didn't just leave them alone to do it, so they struggled. He gave them the same Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus. He gave them the power to be like Jesus with his Holy Spirit. And if you've never been filled with and encountered the Holy Spirit, we can pray for you tonight. Because that same power is available to you to help you fulfill what God's called you to do. So this group of 120 people 
filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, began to spread out and make followers of Jesus wherever they went, starting new churches. They grew. They didn't just stay as 120. The power of the Holy Spirit came on them and they went out. And you start looking at some, in, in Scripture some of the places that they went to. They, they're funny names, but if we actually put them into where they are now, I think it's quite exciting. Think about this, Alex and Dean. But these are the places where they started out. They started in Israel. And then some of the places they went to in Jordan. Then Lebanon. They had different names back then. But that's what they were. Lebanon, Syria, across the Middle East, North Africa, Egypt. That's where the first people went, taking the gospel of Jesus. And the first ecclesia and churches were planted. The very first ones started happening in all that area. And then they spread out. And you, you find tales and stories that they went to India, down to Ethiopia in Africa. They went across to Spain, Italy, <coughs> planting these communities. And they spread right the way across the Roman Empire, planting and starting these ecclesia, these communities, these gatherings that people called out. And even though the churches grew, they started out quite small. You know, when, when I've, I've read some stuff about that, you know, a bit of a nerd for history. And many places, they were just a, they weren't, they certainly weren't the majority of the population. They were just small parts of, in, the, in some of these places. But they were there making a massive influence. So even though they were small, they actually had people right in Caesar's household. Yeah? So that's a bit like saying they've got people right in the houses of Parliament today. Yeah? Even though they were small. That's the kind of influence that they had. You know, and often these people were made fun of. They were beaten up. They were thrown into prison. And sometimes they were killed for their faith. But nothing could put out the fire that burned in their hearts to finish the mission that God's given them. And I just believe God wants to stir a fire in our hearts today to go out there and fulfil his mission. Yeah? And despite ups and downs and people messing it up, because people carry on messing it up, don't we? we that's because who we are. Eventually some great followers of Jesus brought this message to a cold, out of the way part of the Roman. Uh, who's that is? Yeah, we got a boy. Someone wouldn't mind just turning that off. Yeah, they will, they will in a minute. They will in a minute. Let's let them find it. Have we got it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Right. No problem, Brian. So, eventually, some brave followers of Jesus came to bring this message to a place where there were no known believers in a cold, out of Part, out of the way part of the Roman Empire where the people were actually pagans and worshipped all sorts of weird stuff. And that place was called Britannia back then. And new churches were started in that place. And, and, and that place is what we now call England, Scotland, Wales, UK. It was called Britannia back then. And eventually they started, new churches were started, and over many, many years, the gospel of Jesus and churches was found all over this country. So were followers of Jesus. Often, over the centuries, these traditional churches were fairly lifeless. Sometimes they were corrupt. But in each generation, just like we looked at in the Old Testament, there were those that served the purpose of God. Sometimes they were recorded, you can record them. Often they were just humble people who were persecuted for their faith in this country. Yeah, and occasionally you see bits in history where some of them pop up. But in each generation, God has a people. And eventually this message would have reached Worcester and churches would have been planted there. And in the 1800s, there was one that's now known as Worcester Baptist Church. Some faithful people there got together and decided they were going to plant one in the little village where some of us live, called Kenzie. And eventually that church, after about 100 years, came back to Worcester. This is where Hope Church was from. So our heritage goes back all the way to those people. And that is the gathering that you are part of today. 
And now it's our turn now. Yeah? We look back all the way through all these people, but this is our message for tonight to wrap up. Now it's our turn to take this message into our generation and to fill this city with people who are like Jesus. And even to maybe, dare I say it, plant new congregations of people in areas where there aren't any, when there aren't many. Because God's purpose is still carrying on. And he wants to use people like you and me to do that. He doesn't want to pick superstars, mega stars, people who are the TV evangelists with their big thing. He wants to take people like us with all our insecurities and weaknesses and give us a purpose for our life that is to bring Jesus to this generation. And I just feel that God wants to call some of us tonight to serve him in this generation. Yeah, I'm I just so stirred by it. And I've got a question here. Are you ready, despite how you might have messed up, despite how weak you might feel, despite illness that you might have, disability that you might have, struggles that you might have, to make a decision that you, with what you've got, will serve the purpose of God? in this generation, in this church, in this community. Give yourself to God. I believe God wants to call us tonight to do that. And here's the question. What is God stirring in your heart that he's called you to do? We, we keep coming back to that, and I just feel it's so important for us here to realise that God has called us for a purpose. Not just to be people who sit and be looked after, even though we will be looked after, but people who know in themselves that God has called them to something. Yeah, that God has picked them for something. Because Jesus looks right into our hearts, right into our hearts, and he doesn't see how we've messed up, he doesn't see the stuff that we struggle with, but he sees what he's made us to be. And through the power of his spirit, despite the weakness, Apostle Paul said he had something called like a thorn in the flesh, something that was so difficult it made it hard for him to serve God, he decided to trust God's grace and do that anyway. Yeah? You know, it might be anxiety. I battle with anxiety. Yeah? It's a battle for me, and always has been. But I have to battle through it to serve God. Yeah? And it doesn't go away, much as I wish it would. But I have to get pushed through to serve God. And, and I want to ask another question. What is stopping you giving 100% to serve the purpose of God in your life? 100% of what you've got. I'm not talking about 100% of what you haven't got. Yeah? But 100% of what you've got, what is stopping you? Maybe today is the time to throw aside some stuff that's stopping you. Yeah, Some stuff that's holding you back. And just say, well, I'm just going to throw it aside and I'm going to follow Jesus. And then you say, oh, you don't know what, what I struggle with. You don't know the stuff. No, I don't. But Jesus, by his grace... And help us through. I just so believe that God has got people here in this congregation that are called to be city changers in this place. Yeah? City changers. Changers in your community. Yeah? Yeah, I'm just so excited to hear when Paul says he's got 25 people gathered together up near where he lives. City changer. Yeah? City changer. That's what God's called you to be. And I just feel that God just wants to meet with us tonight. And I, I'm just going to pray. And we're just going to... Colin, can we just play very softly? Sorry, I tend to talk over playing, so just bear with me. But I just feel that... that and, if, and if 
I, I'd like us to stand up, right? Unless you really don't want to engage with this, that's fine, you can stay seated, or if you're not able to, don't worry, we can't stand up, Gordon. Um, to, I, I, but I'd just like us to just engage with Jesus, because that's what we're here for tonight. And we're just going to invite the Spirit of Jesus to come. And what I'd like to do is just, maybe just, who here would like God to encourage them with some word? For them tonight. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? I, I just feel God might want to encourage us tonight with some people.